How good are the VORs in your airplane? How good are your VOR skills? Can we make an entire flight from departure to approach and landing using just VORs and our minimum IFR equipment for navigation? Why would we do this in the GPS age? Just for fun, but also to sharpen some situational awareness. So let's jump in. We're making a flight from Norfolk International to Tuck Airport, Whiskey 78 in South Boston, Virginia. You may remember we did an earlier video demonstrating the technique for this flight, which is part of the IFR online ground school available now at the link above. Here, we'll actually fly the flight. Since we're VOR only, we'll need to navigate on the Victor Airways. First, we'll join Victor 1 from the Norfolk VOR co-located at our departure airport. We'll fly to the drone intersection where we'll pick up Victor 266 inbound to the Franklin VOR. We'll continue on Victor 266 by flying the 288 radial away from Franklin and towards the Lawrenceville VOR. Then the airway turns left inbound to the South Boston VOR, where we'll initiate a VOR approach into the airport. The top MEA for the route is 3,000 feet, so we should be good with a cruise altitude of 4,000 feet. We're going to do this without DME, so rather than knowing how far we are from a station, we're going to lean on our navlog for approximate times to pass points, just like we did for VFR dead reckoning. Here we are in the cockpit. We don't want to cheat, so we're going to park our GPS screens into a non-navigation mode. We'll begin by setting the Norfolk VOR into Nav 1, 116.9, and flipping that to active. If we hit CDI, the VLOC mode activates, and the VOR receiver comes alive. Even though we're on the ground, we are able to receive the VOR signal because it's located right here on the airport. We can hit the Nav 1 button on the audio panel to listen to the Morse identifier as we twist the OBS to set our first radial, 233. With that done, we can set the next VOR on our route, Franklin, 110.6. and swap it active. We'll be flying inbound on the 133 radial. So let's be careful here. We want to twist the OBS for 133, but we want to set it on the bottom, not the top. Radials radiate out from the station, but we'll be flying in to the station. So we'll fly the reciprocal heading, set up top now. We're not able to pick up that distant station from the ground here. Okay, let's depart. We'll note our departure time of 2106 Zulu so we can calculate our time crossing each waypoint in our navlog. We're using runway 23 here, which conveniently is pointed almost directly parallel with our route of flight. We'll need just to intercept the radial by chasing the needle to the left. The VOR station is located just at the intersection of the crossing runway, so as we pass it, we'll see the flag flip from to to from. We'll make a gentle turn to the left a few degrees and wait for the needle to center. With the needle centered, the job is to make small corrections to chase the needle. At this close distance, the needle will be very sensitive, so there's no need for large oscillating corrections. This is the key to VOR tracking and instrument flying in general. Small corrections and wait and see the results. The wind is very light today, so we should be able to track the course with the same 233 heading set in our OBS. We'll continue like this until reaching our cruise of 4,000 feet. We'll set our autopilot to hold altitude and heading, so that now we'll make heading changes to chase the needle. Of course, we could set our autopilot to just track the VOR course itself, but we'll pretend that function isn't working here. Now, our next point is the drone intersection, which is where we'll pick up the airway inbound to the Franklin VOR. We've already got that set on our nav too, so let's ident and listen to the Morse. When the needle comes alive on the second VOR receiver, we're approaching the drone intersection. We'll time our turn so that when we roll out on the new heading, indicated on the top of the dial is 313 degrees, the needle on the second VOR will be centered. As we begin the turn, let's make note of our time, 2123 Zulu, so we're more or less on schedule. Once we've rolled out of the turn, let's set the VOR we're currently navigating off of Franklin into our nav 1. It's 110.6. We flip it active and set the OBS to 313. So we're tracking that 133 radial inbound. 
we can put the next VOR on the root, Lawrenceville, into our nav2, 112.9, but we won't need that for a little bit yet. Now, we're just chasing the needle on the first receiver as we approach Franklin. It'll get more sensitive as we get closer. Our nav log tells us we should arrive at around 2133 Zulu, so that's when we'll anticipate the needle starting to swing a lot. As we get there and we notice bigger needle swings, again, we're not trying to chase too much, and eventually we'll let it deflect as we just maintain our on-course heading. When the flag flips, we can start our turn to 288 and note the time. Let's also twist the OBS to 288 since we'll be tracking that radial outbound from Franklin now. This leg is a relatively long one, 43 miles between Franklin and Lawrenceville. There are two fixes in between, Mason and Gepke, each defined as radials from the Hopewell VOR further north. The first one is on the 205 radial. Let's tune into Hopewell on the nav too. 112.0 and twist the 205 radial into the OBS. This will be great for situational awareness. Without DME, it'll tell us when we're crossing Mason, so we can compare it with our nav log to get a sense of our actual time and route. Also, since Mason is 17 miles out from the Franklin VOR, it's close to the midpoint of this segment of the airway, so we can call our changeover point just beyond here. So we'll keep tracking the VOR up top on number one, and then watch for when the needle on the VOR down bottom comes towards center. Don't forget to ident each new station you set in. As we cross over Mason, we'll check our time again, 2142 Zulu. Let's twist the OBS on nav 2 now to 215, the radial off of Hopewell that Gepke lies on. It's around this time too that we can change over from tracking Franklin outbound to tracking Lawrenceville inbound. We'll set Lawrenceville 112.9 into nav 1 and flip it active. Let's also make sure the new radial 106 is set at the bottom of the OBS. Remember, we're flying inbound, so the outgoing radial is set at the bottom. When the needle on the number two VOR centers, we've passed over Gepke. We'll note the time. We'll continue flying inbound until we have station passage on the number one VOR. At that point, we'll turn to our new heading of 269 and twist the OBS to that. We'll change over to the South Boston VOR by setting 110.4 into standby, setting 086 on the bottom of the receiver. If it's confusing whether to set the radial on top or bottom of the VOR, just remember that your on-course heading should be more or less matching what's set up top of the OBS. If you're flying something like the reciprocal of the OBS setting up top, the needle will be reverse sensing. We don't want that. This stuff is tough enough already. Now, the VOR alpha approach into the field begins at the South Boston VOR. When we pass over that, we turn outbound at 261 and track that radial. After a few minutes, we'll begin the course reversal, first turning left to 216 and timing one minute, then turning right to 036 to intercept the 081 inbound course which we now have set on the OBS. After passing the station, which is the final approach fix, we begin our descent and note the time. It'll be about five and a half minutes from here to the missed approach point. We don't have DME, so our MDA is 1200 feet. We break out, gain sight of the field, and begin our circle to runway 19. All in all, not too bad. There's not too, too much going on, but one mistake, like setting the reciprocal heading on the OBS, can lead to some headaches. The key things here are small corrections and maintain situational awareness. When you don't have a GPS to tell you where you are, you need to constantly question your assumptions about your position and what's coming next. 
and try to verify or challenge these using multiple sources like cross radials or time and route.